Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. The Doris Day Show hit television sets in September of 1968 and ran until March of 1963 with a total of 128 episodes. The series is remembered for its multiple format and cast changes over the course of its five-year run. I don't recall ever seeing a show change as much as this one did during its run. In season one, Doris Day portrays Doris Martin, a widowed mother of young sons, Billy and Toby. She's brought her boys home to her father's rural ranch in Mill Valley, just north of San Francisco. All this after living in New York City for most of her adult life. Other characters during the initial phase of the program included Doris Day's father, Buck Webb, their naive hired ranch hand, Leroy. Their housekeeper initially is Aggie Thompson, but she goes off the show after the first 10 episodes and is replaced by Juanita. Lord Nelson is also included in the opening credits as cast, playing Lord Nelson, the family's sheepdog. In the second season, Doris begins to commute from the ranch to San Francisco, where she starts working as an executive secretary at Today's World magazine. New characters are added like McLean Stevenson and Rose Marie plays Doris's friend Myrna Gibbons, a fellow secretary at the magazine. In season three, Doris tires of the commute between her work and the ranch and relocates herself, the boys, and the dog to San Francisco, where they rent an apartment above an Italian restaurant owned and operated by a married couple, Louie and Angie. Angie also goes on to become one of Doris's best friends. All the regulars from the past season remain, with the exception of her father, who only appears in two episodes. No episodes from season three onward take place on his ranch. But Denver Pyle remains on the show's staff behind the scenes, serving as a frequent episode director. The fourth season sees radical change in the fact that Day's character suddenly becomes a swinging single career woman who goes by Miss instead of Mrs. The entire cast from the previous seasons, other than Doris Day herself, are completely gone. Even Doris's two sons are no longer in the cast, and there is no explanation given for that. They just are never referred to again. Doris is still working for Today's World, but now has a new editor. Doris begins a romance with Dr. Peter Lawrence, played by Peter Lawford, which lasts until late into season five. That relationship is followed by one with an old boyfriend, Jonathan Rusk, played by Patrick O'Neill. The show continued with this format until Doris Day left the show choosing not to renew her five-year contract in 1973. So the show basically was a family-based sitcom for its first three seasons. Then the drastic premises change for season four is thought to be attributed in some part to the change in CBS's programming philosophy, with the network canceling many of the homespun family programs and replacing them with more urban, adult-oriented programs. The opening sequence features Doris singing a re-recorded version of her song, Que Sera Sera, Whatever Will Be Will Be. The song had been introduced by Day in the 1956 Alfred Hitchcock suspense film, The Man Who Knew Too Much, in which she co-starred with Jimmy Stewart. Despite the opening montage of images changing from season to season, Day singing this song off-screen during the opening is the one constant 
over the entire course of the show. With a more family-oriented version, including a children's chorus in Season 1, and a more adult version with a stronger beat in Seasons 4 and 5. Doris Day was born Doris Mary Kappelhoff in April of 1922. Her mother was a homemaker, and her father was a music teacher and choir master. For most of her life, she stated that she was born in 1924. But on the occasion of her 95th birthday, the Associated Press found her birth certificate that showed a 1922 birth date. Early on, she developed an interest in dance, and in the mid-1930s, formed a dance duo that performed in nationwide competitions. On October 13, 1937, while she was riding with some friends, their car collided with a freight train, and she broke her right leg, curtailing any prospects of being a professional dancer. While she was recovering from this car accident, she sang along with the radio and discovered her singing talent. She became so bored sitting there that this was a way to make the time go by quicker. Doris Day did not want to do this show at all. Matter of fact, she didn't know anything about the show prior to the sudden death of her husband, Martin Melcher. He had been her business manager for 17 years. When her husband died unexpectedly in April of 1968, just five months before the series was to debut, Doris said that she had no knowledge of ever having signed a contract to do the show. She was going through some of his papers after he died, and she found scripts with her name on it for the show. It turned out that Melcher and the couple's lawyer and financial advisor had squandered millions of dollars that Day had made over her 20-year career in films and in recordings, leaving her basically flat broke with more than a half a million dollars of debt. He and the lawyer had completely negotiated this contract without her ever knowing anything about it at all. During the first season of the show, she was largely going through the motions just to honor this contract with the studio. But she did it, and she had a popular show. Go back and watch an episode of this show. It's a slightly different series than you normally saw at that time. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.